have seen that our relationship with Mary is not only about what she did 2,000 years ago. She was with us 500 years ago. She is with us today. She will be with us in the new creation. Our understanding of the end in the new creation has always been informed by our understanding of the beginning in the first creation. Nuestro entendimiento del fin siempre ha sido determinado por nuestro entendimiento del principio. We understand the Omega together with the Alpha, the new, in the New Testament together with the Old Testament. Paul teaches us that Adam is a model of Christ. We often read the Old Testament for models of the New Testament in the church. This is called typology, as we've seen. For example, Noah passing through the waters of the flood or Moses and the Israelites passing through the waters of the Red Sea can be considered models of baptism. By passing through water, salvation is achieved and sin or sinners can be washed away. Abraham is willing to sacrifice his son who carries the wood on which he is to be sacrificed up the mountain in Jerusalem. This is a model of the crucifixion. In the case of Adam, the model is more of an anti-model. In Adam, we all die. In Christ, we resurrect. In el caso de Adán, el modelo es más un anti-modelo. En Adán morimos, en Cristo todos serán vivificados. The first Adam became a living being, the last Adam a life-giving spirit. A model can be an opposite. Pero, ¿qué pasa con Eva? But what about Eve? Is Eve a model for anything in the New Testament or the New Creation? If I'm in the right place, I think you can guess. But does the New Testament say so? Our tradition says yes. First of all, because of a clue from Gabriel when he greets Mary. In the Latin Vulgate tradition, he says, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus. Most modern translations of Luke are closer to the Greek, but this probably sounds familiar from the Hail Mary, the Ave Maria, and so much great sacred music. But did you catch Eve here? Well, in Spanish and Latin, Eva, Eva is Ave spelled backwards. Mary is the opposite of Eve. Eva in Latin también se dice Eva, e Eva es Ave al revés. Maria es lo apuesta de Eva. The point is not that Luke or his audience had this in mind. The point is that our tradition is always finding deeper meaning in what God has made known to us through Luke. Esta tradición de Eva como lo apuesta a María está expresada por Fra Angelico. This tradition of Eve is the opposite of Mary is expressed by one of, my, one of my favorite artists of the Annunciation, Fra Angelico. In his paintings of the Annunciation, Mary is on one side and Eve is on the far opposite side. Eve is being, is being driven out of Eden. While Adam looks sullen, Eve looks across the image to her opposite at the Annunciation. What else do we learn from this opposition? Some contrasts are specific. Eve sews fig leaves to cover her shame. Mary is a seamstress too. As she wove the flesh of Christ in her womb, she wove the curtain of the temple which tore when her son died. Eva siembra hojas, Maria también es costurera. One major point of contrast is the pursuit of wisdom. Eva buscó sabiduría, pero el árbol correcto era el árbol de la vida, no del conocimiento. Eve sought wisdom, but she made a mistake when picking the tree. There were two trees in the center of the Garden of Eden, the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, and the tree was desirable for gaining wisdom, sabordia. She took from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but we know from Proverbs that the right tree was the tree of life. As Proverbs 3.18 says, she, wisdom, is a tree of life to those who grasp her. And most importantly, Eve took it without permission. She took some of its fruit and ate it. Augustine teaches that the core sin was not disobedience, but pride. Mary is the opposite of all these things in ways big and small. Eve's sin was pride. Mary's virtue was humility. 
Mary received as a gift from God what Eve took without permission. Mary also knew a thing or two about trees. I guess it helped that she married a carpenter. The Greek word for builder could have been translated other ways. Eva siguió a su hijo hasta la cruz, entendida como el árbol de Huerta del Eden. She followed her son to the she followed her son, the retired carpenter, to the to the cross, understood as the tree of life from the Garden of Eden. In the book of Revelation, Mary leads us back to the tree of life in the city of God. Blessed are they who wash their robes as to have the right to the tree of life and enter the city through the gates. Revelation 22, 14. Most importantly, Mary received the exact same thing that Eve tried to take, namely wisdom itself. Going back to the book of Proverbs, we believe that Christ is the wisdom through whom God created the world. The Nicene Creed identifies Christ as the traditional figure of wisdom, the first begotten of God before all ages. Mary received wisdom itself from God and gave it flesh to live among us. Maria recibió la sabiduría misma de parte de Dios y le dio carne para vivir entre nosotros. Eve attempted to take wisdom from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She was nice enough to share. Unfortunately, she shared the consequence of death with her husband and all their descendants until Christ. From that tree you shall not eat. When you eat from it, you shall die. Genesis 2.17. Death reigned from Adam and Eve to Mary and Jesus. Eve brought sin and death into the world. Mary brings redemption into the world. Eva trajo el pecado y la muerte al mundo. Maria trae la redención al mundo. Mary's offspring defeated death itself. From the Christian perspective, there is irony in Eve's name. Genesis 3.20, the man gave his wife the name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. We have to wait for Eva spelled backwards for the true life. John 10, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. Eva era la madre de todos los vivientes, hijo de María de vida eterna. María entonces resuelve el falso comienzo de su antepasado. Eve lost a son, Abel. Mary lost a son, Jesus. But there is taking life and there is giving life. Mary resolves the false beginning of her ancestor. Otro punto importante de contraste es la contienda con el diablo. Por la envidia del diablo, la muerte entró en el mundo. Another point of contrast is the contest with con, contrast. Another point of contrast is the contest with the devil. See, I can stumble in English as well as Spanish. <laughs> Christian interpretation understands the serpent in the Garden of Eden as the devil, who tricked the gullible Eve. This suggestion may go back to the wisdom of Solomon, although some scholars argue the original author understood uh, the opponent as Cain. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who are allied with the devil experienced death. Eve was left with little more than a promise that a distant descendant would crush the head of the devil. Genesis 3.15 can be understood to a particular descendant of Eve, namely Jesus. I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head while you strike at their heel. In fact, many Christian interpreters understood Genesis to mean that the devil not only tricked Eve into eating the fruit, but seduced and impregnated her. Muchos intérpretes cristianos entendieron que Genesis se refiere a que el diablo no solo engañó a Eva para que comiera el fruto, sino que la sedujo y la fecundó. This is not as big a stretch as it may first appear. In Hebrew, Genesis 3 is rife with erotic imagery and innuendo. The key verse is remarkably odd and difficult to translate. A literal translation might read, And the man knew his wife, and she was pregnant, and she bore Cain, saying, I have acquired a man with the Lord. Many to think that to know a woman is biblical euphemism for sexual intercourse, but that's not generally true in Hebrew. 
Also, the word man is far from expected when one gives birth to a normal male child. Elsewhere, the word man can refer to an angel, as in Genesis 18, 2. It would be just as easy to understand the verse as saying, And the man noticed that Eve, his wife, was pregnant. She gave birth to Cain, saying, I have received a demigod with a divine being. Eve names the child, while Adam conspicuously does not. In antiquity, and with some remnants today, it would have been traditional for a father to give a name and his own last name as a sign of recognizing a child of his own. Only later does Adam name a child and recognize it as looking like himself. Genesis 5.3, Adam was 130 years old when he, when he begot a son in his likeness, after his image, and he named him Seth. Modern scholars would rely on source criticism and the function of genealogy in the priestly narrative to explain why this verse focuses on Seth as Adam's real son who actually looks like him. You can see how pre-modern scholars might conclude that the previous children in the story were not Adam's own children, but rather children of another father. Solo más tarde Adán nombra a un niño y lo reconoce como el mismo. Fácil explicar que un ángel caído, el diablo, impregnó a Eva según Genesis 6. It would be easy to explain that a fallen angel, the devil, impregnated Eve based on Genesis 6. When human beings began to grow numerous on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, understood here as angels, saw how beautiful the daughters of humans were, so they took them to be wise whomever they pleased. The Nephilim, the fallen ones, appeared on earth in those days, as well as later, after the sons of God, these angels, had intercourse with the daughters of human beings who bore them sons. The book quoted in the New Testament as the prophet Enoch elaborates on this incident. The angels willfully rebelled against God and spread evil on the earth, leading to the flood. No less so, the early Christians from a pagan background would have had a concept of the possibility that a divine being or a fallen angel or the devil in the Garden of Eden could deceive, seduce, or rape a girl and impregnate her. Los primeros cristianos querían dejar muy claro que no solo María no fue prenada por un ángel caído, sino que era lo opuesta a Eva en todos los sentidos. Por mucho que Eva se caracterice por ser ingenua, María se caracteriza por ser inteligente y culta. E interroga a Gabriel. Early Christians wished to be very clear that not only was Mary not impregnated by a fallen angel, but she was the opposite of Eve in every way. As much as Eve is characterized as gullible, Mary is characterized as smart and well-read. In scenes of Mary's youth, and especially at the Annunciation, she is always reading. Early church father John Chrysostom retells the story of the Annunciation to portray Mary as the opposite of submissive and accepting. Rather, she subjects to poor Gabriel a full cross-examination. She catches him in contradictions that Christians would later call mysteries. She grills Gabriel on how her child could be fully God and fully human. Did she catch a deceiver in a lie or identify the difficulty that would face all students of Christology for millennia to come? She crafts an answer that is foolproof, according to Chrysostom. If she consented to the angel, she would be in big trouble if the angel was a, uh, was a deceiver. The response, let it be done to be according to God's will, would be safe either way. I think we lose something when we think of Mary as submissive or, or blindly obedient. Personally, I am proud to work at a university named after Mary, as so many are in one way or another. I think of Mary as someone who reads all the time and engages with faith and reason. She is smart, and she uses her intellect to engage with propositions. Along with her ancestors, Abraham and Jacob, she argues with God as appropriate. Cada vez que dialogamos con Dios para dar sentido a cómo Dios se está relacionado con nosotros, 
para comprender nuestra propia, de, propia fe, estamos llevando a cabo la obra de María. Ella está con nosotros. Whenever we struggle with God, to make sense of how God is dealing with us, to understand our own faith, we are carrying on the work of Mary. She is with us. So I've prepared three topics for discussion, uh, and the Spanish is in the, the program. First, if you're like me, and I know I am, you know more people named Adam than you know people named Eve. Is Eve that much worse than Adam? Or might the Christian interpretation that compares her with Eve make Eve look worse than she does in Genesis by itself? Another thing you might think about, at least in English, the word graceful, we call Mary full of grace, the word graceful seems to suggest calm or serene, but grace can mean all the gifts of God. When we hear Mary called full of grace, do we remember all the gifts of God? Do we picture Mary as full of strength, full of wisdom, full of understanding? Or just a really good running back, like Botticelli thinks. <laughs> Some Christians consider traditional expansions beyond the word of the Bible itself to be corruptions or distractions from the truth of the Bible. Do you think these traditions are helpful in suggesting new ways to think about the Bible? Or perhaps do they deviate too far? So take 10 minutes, uh, discuss, and then we will uh, conclude with uh, a last invitation to, to share uh, a reflection, and then we will have a liturgy of the word. Thank you very much.